Hello, uh, my name is Kurt Wallace. I'm a senior solutions engineer with Bright Computing. And today I wanted to talk about blending it all together. Now, it all starts with the workloads. Uh, there are a wide range of workloads that need the computational resources that a cluster can offer. For example, there's HPC, there's big data using Hadoop or Spark or Cassandra, machine learning or deep learning workloads with TensorFlow or Torch or Teano, and then workloads running inside of Docker containers, uh, orchestrated by container management systems, such as Kubernetes or Mesos with Marathon. And the workload running inside those containers would be uh, microservices building some sort of web services, a big data workload, a machine learning workload. Now clusters these days are almost always built out of servers running Linux with a network connecting the servers. However, clusters are hard to set up and then manage afterwards. So we made Bright Cluster Manager to make it easier. Bright ties everything together and makes all of the hardware inside of the cluster, the servers, the switches, the PDUs, etc., appear as a single large entity on your network. On every machine, there is a lightweight cluster management daemon, and these daemons are communicating with each other to make the cluster manageable, to health check the nodes, and to monitor the cluster. All of these workloads come with frameworks. For HPC, you submit jobs to a workload manager. For big data, you deploy Hadoop or Spark. For containers, you have to use Kubernetes or Mesos with Marathon. But these application and infrastructure frameworks are also hard to set up. So we started integrating them to make their deployment easy too. Bright allows you to smoothly set up workload frameworks such as OpenStack, Hadoop, Spark, Kubernetes, Mesos, etc. And after they've been set up, we provide a management interface that allows administrators to monitor, health check, and control these workload frameworks. Bright allows you to mix different workload frameworks on the same cluster, which means that you can use the same cluster for hosting containerized microservers and running HPC jobs simultaneously. What typically happens is that you dedicate certain nodes in your cluster to running a particular type of workload. This can be changed very easily so that you can repurpose nodes very easily, either manually or automatically. We can monitor the workload within the frameworks and reassign nodes according to the policies you determine. In this example, if your big data workload goes down and your HPC workload goes up, Bright can adjust to those needs. Bright also makes it easy to extend your on-premise infrastructure to the public clouds. Uh, the nice thing about Bright is that it uses the same software image to provision your cloud nodes as is being used on your on-premise nodes. The same image, the same daemon, the same management interface, wherever the job is running. Now, we've not talked about running virtualized workload yet. The recommended way of doing that is in Bright through OpenStack. Just like other frameworks, OpenStack is hard to deploy. Now, Bright provides a certified OpenStack distribution that streamlines the entire deployment process and provides a management interface after the deployment is complete. Of course, you can provision VMs through OpenStack with any OpenStack image you like, but it's also possible to deploy VMs using a Bright software image. This way, the VMs can be provisioned, configured, monitored, and health checked as if they were part of the cluster in which they are contained. Another interesting use case is cluster on demand, which allows an administrator to spin up virtualized Bright clusters inside of OpenStack. This gives organizations the ability to give individual users or groups of users their own virtualized Bright cluster with which they can do whatever they want. Of course, these virtualized clusters can be used for all sorts of purposes, running HPC, big data, or machine learning workloads. Virtualized clusters can be resized very easily, so more nodes can be added or removed whenever necessary. Now, some organizations want to be able to use cluster on demand, but they don't want the overhead of virtualization. So in Bright 8.0, these users will be able to use Ironic in combination with cluster on demand. What this allows an administrator to do is effectively create sub-clusters inside of their large cluster. 
Each subcluster is completely independent from the cluster in which it's contained and any other subclusters. And if the workload demand inside these frameworks changes, we can change what type of nodes are running uh, inside these virtual clusters, just like we did on the regular clusters. And from each of these clusters, it's possible to burst to the public cloud, meaning that clusters can be extended with resources from AWS uh, or Azure. Uh, and again, the same software images, the same daemon, the same management interface, wherever the job is running. And lastly, the number of nodes that you're running in the public cloud can be increased or decreased based on workload. As cloud workload decreases, Bright can spin down these instances to save you money. In addition to that, if workload continues to decrease, we can shut down physical nodes on your cluster to save power. As the workload goes back up, Bright can quickly power on and provision these nodes to handle the demand. Thank you for your time today.